Hi there everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDrydocks.com and I got another project that we want to share with you today. This is a 1 9th scale German Seehund midget submarine uh, kit originally put out by OTW out of the UK. So let's take a look at how the sub is put together and uh, hopefully we'll have some footage of it in operation to share. So first off, this is actually a very sizable model. It's about 54 inches in overall length, uh, and it's got about a six inch beam to it. Another cool thing about this is it comes with torpedoes. Uh, you can see them under slung on the boat there, and they're about uh, you know, two and a half inches in diameter, which in my mind offers ample opportunity to actually create remote controlled torpedoes to go with your remote controlled submarine. Uh, unfortunately, this particular build did not incorporate those, but as I said, certainly something that you could try and tackle yourself quite easily down the road. So we'll take a look at everything that we've got in this particular build. We've got uh, a large nickel metal hydride battery pack that's been waterproofed by the previous owner, and it's quite well done actually. We've got some waterproof boots on the end of the uh, cylinder. Um, waterproof connection that's going to go to the cylinder itself. Now this is a four and a quarter inch OTW dive module. It's their you're making too much noise. It's their standard dive module that they put in many of their different builds. Uh, you can see a little bit of condensation in the central ballast tank there. It's just because there's a little bit of water left over from the test and trimming that I've done of the boat. The radio system controlling the boat is a, a VEX six channel computerized radio and we've got a remote key fob to turn the boat on and off for main power. And you can actually see that module right here in the forward section of the dive module. If you're familiar with the OTW dive modules, basically they're broken into three sections. We've got a forward compartment. This particular build has that aforementioned remote on off switch with an inline 15 amp fuse. Got our main pump and then in line with that is a solenoid valve that stops water from backing up through the pump when it's turned off. We've got a forward servo that uh, can be utilized for bow planes and this particular boat doesn't have any bow planes but again flexibility so you can put this in different model. We've got a central uh, 8 inch ballast tank uh, and then moving in the back we've got the receiver, two servos, one for rudder, one for dive planes and a big beefy drive motor. If we take a sneak look at the bottom there we've got an automatic pitch controller, the main electronic speed controller and then in the front section here we've got our dive control module from OTW. Um, got a built-in fail-safe with that by the way that if the battery voltage drops too low or if there's loss of signal ballast is automatically blown. So that is a very cool feature of the OTW dive modules. Taking a look at the hull itself you can see a ton of really awesome detail. All that rivet work uh, that's cast into the sail or the, or the conning tower of the boat. Uh, this particular one is built with the court nozzle uh, option which I believe was sort of a mid-war effort um, to control and this gives exceptionally good steering control. We'll take a quick look uh, inside and basically the top is just held on by gravity because there's really um, no flotation in there other than a few tiny strips for final trimming. Here we've got some magnetic connectors that attach to the cylinder and you got our rear dive planes working there and our rudder. 
Flotation foam is all installed there. We got just a little bit of weight in the bottom. Most of the ballast actually comes from the main drive battery. And we've got some large Velcro tabs that hold the watertight cylinder in place. Installation of the watertight cylinder is a really easy procedure. Um, basically, you want to make sure that these Velcro tabs are outside. And then we're going to slip the battery in place first. Uh, and that just moves right up into the front there. There's a Velcro tab that attaches to one in the bottom of the boat. And that ensures that it doesn't slip uh, forward and back once the boat is underway. Let's try and get that centered out here just a little bit better. There we go. So battery uh, in place. Grab our cylinder. Gonna attach the power lead, the waterproof power lead. Slips forward into the hull. Then we drop the bottom down. Again, making sure that our Velcro tabs are outside. Now we uh, basically need a specialized tool, uh, just a little bent piece of brass. And what we're going to do is we're just going to fish that drive shaft up, align it to the cylinder's dog bone connector, slip that in place, and give the prop a little spin. There you go. The bow of the cylinder dropped down, locked in place. I'm going to swivel these magnetic connectors so they lock in place. That's all set. And now basically all you do is attach the Velcro nice and tight. And cylinder is completely installed. All right, let's power on the model here so you can see everything in action. Got the cylinder installed. I'm going to turn my radio on and press the on button on the key fob. And there we go. We're now powered on. Um, really, there's uh, three, four main uh, controls that are in place on the transmitter. We've got our dive control, and that's got the electronic pitch control, automatic pitch controller in place there as well. We've got rudder. We've got throttle. And of course the ballast tank, which is controlled by a switch on the back of the transmitter. Down dives, up surfaces. And that is it. All of the main functions of the boat. So I was out trimming the boat yesterday and I did manage to get a little bit of footage both on top and under the water. So let me show that to you. You can see how the boat behaves and then I'll give you some feedback as to its performance.
As you saw, this boat can actually kick up a pretty tremendous weight. It's got a lot of speed thanks to the gearing of the motor and the shrouded propeller. Uh, in reverse, there's actually not a lot of thrust I found, and I'm not entirely sure why. Another feature, though, of that quart nozzle in the back of the boat is that you maintain excellent steering response, both forward and reverse, which is kind of a neat feature when you're trying to get turned around in tight quarters of the boat. Now, I did not have this boat completely dialed in uh, for trim. It's about 90% of the way there, so the new owner is going to need to do the final trim but it's certainly good enough to get in the water, starting to learn about the behavioral habits of the boat. And I think the last thing that I wanted to mention on this boat, there's a ton of places uh, for air to get trapped and it's important to make sure there's lots of drain holes in the upper hull to allow air to escape the hull. In particular, both of these torpedoes are obviously hollow and they hold a lot of water. So two things, you need to make sure when you put the boat in the water that you submerge it, tilt it forward and back, knock all of those air bubbles out so you don't get any weird behavior when you get the boat into operation. The other thing about that, because it is such a sizable boat, is it holds a lot of water. As you lift it, that water needs to drain, but that initial lift is uh, probably 50 to 60 pounds of model that you have to pull out of the water. So something to keep in mind with big boats also comes big muscles to get it in and out of the water. Well, there you go, everyone. Just a quick overview of this build, the one ninth scale German Seehund Midget Submarine from OTW out of the UK. Thank you for joining me again. My name is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. If you're interested in what you've seen or want to see other projects, please visit my website at nautilusdrydocks.com. There's lots of kits, parts, components, resources, and information there for you on this awesome hobby. So thanks a lot, everyone. We will catch you next time.